Hey, John the Tech here from Link's Wall Automotive. In this installation video, we're going to be installing our Generation 2 T-Style into this new Dodge Ram. All right, so what we did is we took everything out of the box and put it on our table here so you can see uh, what should come in your kit. Uh, first is your actual T-Style unit here, which will mount to your factory bezel, your USB-driven DVR camera, your phone link uh, USB dongle, your, UF, or your Wi-Fi uh, antenna, your Bluetooth microphone. Uh, this is for the high-end uh, Dodge Ram climate control adapter, uh, your AM and FM antenna adapter, uh, your wired uh, DVR input, your auxiliary uh, amplifier output, your RCA outputs, as well as your microphone input harness, uh, your auxiliary input harness, your camera input harness, your USB 1 and 2 harness, uh, this one here, the brown one, uh, some of them uh, will have a red tip. They will have a mini USB to adapt to the factory uh, US cord, USB cord so that those will keep functioning. Uh, your USB 3 uh, input, your GPS navigation antenna, your uh, CAN box interface, this here's how we, uh, the unit will know which style climate control your factory unit was. And then you're going to have two power harnesses in here. And what I want you to notice is there's two power harnesses. They're going to look s pretty much identical apart from uh, on one end. This one will have uh, four sets of speaker wires, a green with green black, a white with white black, a gray with a gray black, and a purple with a purple black. This harness is for any of the trucks that do not have a factory amplifier. Uh, the one that only has a white and white black and gray and gray black, this will be for all of your systems that come with uh, the Alpine system or any of the other uh, Chrysler amplified systems. Uh, so when you go to plug these in, make sure you're grabbing the correct harness. Uh, and then as well as your paperwork, so quick uh, attention uh, bulletins for uh, how to program your climate control. You wanna make sure you read that. Uh, your DVR, give you an upside down or an idea of what the DVR is gonna do. And then of course your user manual. Uh, so this is everything in this uh, should come in your package. If you're missing something, please email us and we'll let you know. Uh, but this is what we've got. We're gonna jump in the truck now. If you guys will join me, we'll do this install. All right, so here we are, we're inside our truck. Uh, we're installing one that does not have the uh, full center console. This one's got a, a bench seat up front. Uh, so the install will be a little different for those who have uh, the center console. But for the most part, this is the piece we're after. This piece is gonna come off, which is gonna help us. So in this specific application, there will be two T20 torques that are right up here. You'll remove a little plastic uh, rubber cover and underneath there will be two T20s. And then in here in this pocket, again, you'll remove uh, the little rubber piece and there will be a T20 in that back corner. Uh, once you get these three off, uh, this entire panel here will pop off and then you'll get uh, four seven millimeters that are holding the radio in to pull the radio out. And then what we'll do is we're gonna take this entire dash bezel back to our table so that we can remove the factory climate bezel here and then mount our T-style unit in there. Uh, for those of you who have the full center console, you do have a, a, a cup holder, depending on what year it is, uh, you're gonna have to make sure you pull the cup holder stuff out and the top center piece here to be able to get the bottom lip of your console out here. Uh, if you watch one of our install videos of the generation one, uh, we actually show how to take apart the center console so you can find that through our YouTube channel as well. Uh, so what I'll go ahead and do is I will take apart this bezel, we'll speed the video up and then we'll talk about our connections, how to run our microphone, how to run our DVR camera, and then we'll take the bezel over to the counter and uh, we'll talk about how to swap this piece. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and take this apart and then we'll keep going. So there we have it. Now this is everything uh, we have out now. Uh, so this is gonna be uh, your main power harness. So again, uh, you're going to want to make sure that you grab the correct uh, main harness. I talked about it earlier. Uh, the truck we're working on has no amp, uh, so we're looking for the one that's got all four set of speaker wires. Uh, so to put this in, uh, you'll make sure that the, uh, the latch is all the way open. Line up the pins. And then push it down and lock it in. And if you'll notice, there's some RCAs hanging off of here. Um, You've got the uh, factory rear view camera, so you're gonna wanna make sure uh, that you take your camera input harness, locate the yellow RCA marked factory camera input. Uh, you're gonna wanna make sure you plug those two together. Uh, you're also gonna have two sets of uh, red and whites. Uh, one of them is gonna be marked um, 
the, uh, the audio input, and the other one will be marked CD audio input. Uh, so audio input is for those vehicles that have an auxiliary input. Uh, for those of you who have a factory CD in your center console, we're going to be able to retain that, ex that CD. And so you will use your CD uh, audios and plug those into your aux input, um, your gray plug, so that when you put it all back together, you can control the CD. This gray plug here is your factory USB. So I spoke about it earlier on the brown plug or some of them, the plastic will be a red color. Uh, you're gonna take your, your mini USB and those will plug right in there. Uh, this brown wire or this brown plug, you're not gonna worry about. That's the factory satellite plug. Uh, this white one with a much thicker coax, that is your FM antenna. So you're gonna take your FM uh, antenna harness adapter and that should just plug right in. And then those are gonna be the main connections you're gonna take here uh, for the radio. Now, you're also gonna to wanna to make sure you don't forget uh, your yellow plug that's got your uh, amplifier RCA outputs uh, because it also has your microphone input. Uh, so we are going to install our microphone up on the A-pillar. Uh, for those of you who don't know what the A-pillar is, if you follow uh, the driver's side windshield up to where the plastic meets uh, the headliner, that would be the A-pillar. You'll just put it kind of put it up on top. Uh, your DVR camera, you want to mount right behind the rear view mirror so it's tucked out of the way. Uh, both of those harnesses, you're going to want to tuck in the headliner, uh, come down the side A-pillar, and then across in here to behind uh, the radio where we can plug in our DVR into our USB 3. And then we will plug our microphone into, uh, like I said, the yellow plug that also has our amplifier outputs on it. Uh, so th those are going to be the main connections. What I'm going to do is I'm going to mount the DVR, run the DVR cord. I'm going to run the microphone cord so everything's here. And then once we have all of our wires here ready for us, we'll take the panel to the desk. Now to mount the DVR, super easy. A uh, little double stick tape on the panel here. Uh, just peel that off. And uh, like I said, find it as, as dead center and as high up on the windshield as possible uh, to make sure that it doesn't obstruct your view and gets the best angle uh, to record as you drive. So there you can see, there's our uh, DVR camera kind of tucked up there. We're gonna run this wire up. Uh, if you've got a plastic pry tool, uh, just kind of tuck your USB here along the way on the headliner. And then we're gonna go all the way to, you can see our microphone here. And uh, we'll take this down here. We'll go down uh, the weather stripping and then come across the dash. Okay, for this next step, you're gonna need a drill with a Phillips tip or a uh, Phillips tip screwdriver, whichever you prefer to use. Uh, and like I said, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this, this black bezel, uh, this black bezel here off the, the main dash that's the same shape as our T-style. And in order to do that, we're gonna flip it over and there'll be screws on the backside. So it'd be a really good idea uh, to use some kind of a towel or a blanket or something just to make sure you don't uh, scuff up your, uh, your new dash bezel. Um, so you can see there are uh, multiple Phillips screws here that are holding on our factory climate control bezel. Uh, so depending again, if you've got an eight inch screen or a five inch screen, this is going to look a little different, but all of the screws will be the same. Uh, so we're going to remove all of the Phillips screws, uh, that are holding on the factory bezel. And then we'll remove the factory bezel. Our T style will go right in the same way the factory bezel came out. We'll use the same screws to mount our factory or to our mount our T style into our factory bezel. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. So once you have all 13 uh, of the Phillips tip screws out, the bottom's gonna uh, in unhinge so that you can uh, slide out the top. It's gonna have like a little latch. So you kind of lift it up and pull it out. And then uh, there we go. So this is gonna go off to the side. Say this in case you ever sell your truck, you wanna pull your T-style out. And then our T-style is gonna go uh, back in in reverse order. Uh, so if we lift up our bezel, you can put it there. And like I said, you're gonna slide in so that that top piece can go on the back side of our bezel and then line up all the holes. Now there will be one screw left over down here at the bottom, the bottom middle one, you can't put that screw in. Please don't try. There's a circuit board back there. If you try to put that middle bottom screw in, uh, you're gonna mess up uh, your, 
hazard light and a little bit of the CAN data inform information, and you might have a problem. Uh, so make sure you put 12 in, not 13. So we'll put all 12 of these in, and then our dash bezel will be ready to go in there, get plugged in, and, and uh, turned on. There you go, there's our one extra screw. And if we flip it over, we can see, it sits in there nice and flush, just like the factory one will. And uh, that's what that is. So we're gonna go uh, back in the truck. Uh, we'll go in there, we'll talk real quick about uh, what we're plugging in here. Uh, a little bit about our climate controls, depending again on which climate control you have will depend on which one of these plugs. Not every one of these plugs will be full. Uh, if you've got the automatic or the high-end version, with an 8-inch screen where you were able to touch screen control your climate controls, you're going to be using our, uh, our adapter, and that's going to use a small plug. Uh, for the 4-inch, or for the 4-speed, and for the 7-speed with the smaller screen, uh, you'll be using the factory plug. It'll plug directly into there. So that's what we got. Let's go back in the truck. All right, so you also should have a climate control um, bulletin. This is letting you know how to select uh, which style climate control you have. And the first step is to locate your CAN box, uh, figure out if you've got the four speed or the seven speed, uh, speed fan, or if you've got the auto AC or the seven speed with the eight inch screen. Again, uh, notice the uh, difference in the icons on the paper. It's gonna tell you how to set up your dip, dip switches. Uh, so for us, we're dealing with a four speed. Uh, so we're gonna leave all of our dip switches up. And this CAN box here is gonna plug in on this white side here into uh, the white plug coming off of the main uh, power harness. So once you've set your dip switch, uh, plug that in. Uh, quick note, just to make sure that this uh, black reset button is not stuck, uh, but that you can see that it can it's sticking out. Just kind of feel around for there a bit. Uh, and one thing I forgot to mention uh, earlier in the video is about the navigation antenna. Uh, so what I did was I mounted it above the climate or the uh, air air duct here, the air vent hose. Uh, just a little piece of double stick tape that's already attached to it. Stick it on there. Uh, it can go underneath plastic, but it cannot go underneath metal. So if you're going to stick it underneath the dash, just make sure that there's no metal between it and the sky. Uh, run it through, and then that will plug into the back of our, uh, our T-style T unit. Um, so if you notice here, I've, what I've done is I've made all of our connections. Uh, so this truck isn't equipped with the factory CD. It's only equipped with the factory auxiliary. Uh, so I grabbed the two auxiliaries. Um, input factory auxiliaries from the main harness, plugged them into our gray uh, auxiliary input for our T-style. Um, our purple uh, USB 3, uh, I have our DVR camera plugged into it. There's our brown or red, depending on which unit you get, uh, USB 1 and 2. And again, it's uh, plugged into the factory one. And what I did was I ran our secondary universal one here into the glove box in case we wanted to use like a thumb drive, throw a bunch of movies on there or something. Um, we have our factory backup camera, yellow wire coming from our main harness, plugging into our black camera input harness, and as well our yellow uh, amplifier RCA outs and microphone input. So our microphone's plugged in here. Uh, just a little tech tip. Uh, sometimes it's a good idea to kind of tape up these RCA connections um, or the uh, connection for the microphone. Uh, sometimes when you're uh, working on putting the dash back in, it can pull a harness and unplug something. And that's the worst is when you got to pull it all back apart because something came unplugged. Uh, so just kind of a tech tip to, to tape those up so they don't come apart. Uh, use some zip ties to kind of take up all the slack here so that it's not dangling and doesn't get pinched anywhere. Um, and then once you have all that uh, kind of taped up and zip tied nice, uh, then it's ready to go in. And they'll plug into uh, the bottom here. You can see, hopefully the bottom of our T-style here. So there's our main power harness. And then here are all the uh, different inputs between the camera, the USBs, the DVR, all of that stuff is gonna go right here. And if you notice, you should have a little red tip here. You wanna make sure you pull that little red rubber tip off there and put on your fact, your uh, Wi-Fi antenna. Otherwise, um, if you're trying to use the internet browser, uh, you're gonna have kind of a weak Wi-Fi signal. Uh, so make sure you do that as well. And again, we have our factory plugs that we're going to make sure. So here's our factory climate control because we're dealing with the four speed. Uh, so we'll make sure that plugs back in as well. We've got our, our big four speed uh, that we'll plug in here on the side here as well because it's just the four speed. Um, and then we've got our factory uh, trailer brake uh, plugs and the other accessories. Uh, so what we'll do is 
I will give you just a word of advice. It is going to be, this hole here is just big enough uh, for it to fit the back of this panel with the plugs. So take your time. Uh, don't push too hard. You don't want to break the screen. You don't want to break your panel because uh, that would be uh, no good at all. Uh, so take your time as you start to push these wires back in here. Slowly put them in there. You don't want to break a wire. You don't want to pinch a wire. and You don't want to snap a panel. Uh, so just be mindful. Be careful as you start putting it back together. So uh, you're going to go in kind of uh, down, up into a down uh, motion, uh, make sure everything's plugged in, snap it in, and then you'll put all the screws back in. So you put your two um, tor T20s up here, your T20 here in the middle, and again, depending upon if you've got the center console, you'll put that center console back together. And then once we've added all uh, in and back together, uh, we will talk about how to set the programming for the actual type of um, fan speed you have, and then we'll go through some of the features that Gen 2 has. Uh, we'll talk about the phone link, we'll talk about um, the internet, all of that good stuff. So, uh, while I put this back together, we'll speed the video up and then we'll talk as we power it on. All right, so there you go, we're all powered on. So now to make sure that we are running the correct uh, protocol for our, our climate control, uh, we're gonna find our settings. We're gonna go to settings, um, and then we're gonna use the explanation point here with a circle, uh, which is our system version. It's gonna give us all of our um, MCU information and all that stuff. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our finger, we're gonna hold somewhere on the writing here, not where it says MCU upgrade, um, and it's gonna reveal a keypad. Our passcode is gonna be seven, two, one, one, we're gonna hit okay. And then you can see here uh, up on top, what is selected currently is Dodge Ram mid. Uh, again, ours is a low because it's only a four speed. So we're gonna go through our options here. We're gonna find Dodge Ram low, select it once so that it's red, select it twice to say that we wanna change it. And now if we notice up on top, it says Dodge Ram low. Now in order for this setting to, to stay and set, we have to turn off the car, open a door to make sure that the CAN bus system completely shuts down so that it can restart. And then once it's completely shut down, give it about 10, 15 seconds uh, for it to save the setting. And then we will go ahead and turn it back on. And so there we are, we're all set back up. Uh, so we can go to our home page. we can hit climate here. Um, and this is where we can control our climate. We can go up and down in our speed. Uh, we want it to go fan up, fan down, to turn the temperature up and down. Uh, again, depending on if you've got a, a higher end with the automatic, you'll be able to do dual climate control. Uh, putting this in does not upgrade your climate. It will only control the current climate you have. So if you have seat heaters, um, if you don't have seat heaters, all of that stuff is going to remain the same. It's just going to depend on what you got. Uh, so this is an install for our Gen 2 Ram. Uh, there are a few varying differences depending on your truck, one of which I did mention uh, was that you may need to use uh, the uh, harness adapter uh, for the high-end version for the uh, the ones with the 8-inch screen with the 7-speed or the automatic. Um, I will give uh, just a tech tip now. Um, if that is your uh, vehicle, there are two manufactured plugs. They're identical except for where the little uh, notch is here. Uh, so if you notice that yours uh, notch is more towards the center, uh, you just happen to have one that's manufactured in the center. Uh, so you can just take a uh, razor blade and uh, slice off a little bit of this plastic piece or take the black uh, factory plug and just shave off uh, the little knuck knuckle there and then they'll slide in and then this will plug into uh, our thing and it will control. And you just want to make sure that you've got the one dip switch uh, flipped on and you want to make sure that when you go into uh, system version that you set it up as a uh, Ram high. Uh, so again, this is our install for Gen 2. Uh, we'll do some two-minute how-tos, so check out our, uh, some more of our videos on our YouTube. Uh, we'll talk about how the DVR camera works. Uh, we'll talk about the phone link. We'll talk about the internet. We'll talk about navigation, uh, Bluetooth, uh, and all of that fun stuff. Uh, hopefully